Welcome to the guide, Exile. Now this build I've got for you here is a bit out of my wheelhouse, and is certainly not a playstyle I have gone about in numerous patches. What we have here is not only a bow-wielding Exile, but a poison-based bow assassin that sneaks through enemies, applying deadly damage over time stacks that siphon the life right out of them as we casually traverse the landscape and pick up our precious loot. As a forewarning, this build and playstyle is much different than your usual upfront damage dealers, such as elemental conversion bow characters, as we apply a damage over time that instead kills our enemies. As such, you will not be killing enemies on first hit and making them explode in a fanfare of particle effects, I see you over there elementalist, but rather relishing in their demise as their life pools quickly drain after ramping up a few poisons. So if you're not interested in this playstyle, or it seems too slow, or not flashy enough, then this isn't the build for you. Even still, I found this build to be extremely satisfying both in its clearing speed, coverage, and bossing potential, along with a hefty number of defensive layers to make us feel very safe in almost every encounter. With patch 3.0's changes to poison, and even the assassin, many of the benefits to running a poison-centric or even secondary poison damage build were lost due to the new way poison was calculated. To make a long story short, most modifiers for poison were decoupled from their front-end damage modifiers, meaning that you really have to choose whether you want upfront or back-end damage to dominate your build. This meant that we ended up heavily relying on many uniques to get our poison damage to feel good. However, with patch 3.2's update to the Assassin, we are now able to create very powerful poison builds with him with minimal required gear. The main factor that scales the Assassin's poison damage so well is his Ascendancy node, Noxious Strike. This increases poison duration for each subsequent poison that is applied within a 4 second window. This means if we stack hundreds of poisons within a few seconds, they will last a very long time, and even up to over 40 seconds on Shaper if we stack enough. This not only increases the damage per second as we have more poisons on the enemy at once, but how long they will take that damage for. With this in mind, we will want to try and stack as many poisons as quickly as possible, and there is a great bow for that, the Quill Rain. Usually the Quill Rain cannot be used in many builds since it has low innate damage, along with a 40% less weapon damage modifier on it, making its upfront damage very poor. Luckily for us, in the 3.0 damage over time changes, we now calculate our poison from the base damage of our attack, such as projectile damage or the less weapon damage modifier seen on the Quill Rain. This means with the use of the Quill Rain, or greater multiple projectiles, our poison damage won't be hindered. Since we are using bows, there are no better skills than Barrage and Tornado Shot to bring us the most amount of overlapping projectiles to apply as many poisons as possible. So let us get into the details of this Quill Rain Assassin. The Quill Rain Assassin is a joy to play, and gives you the feeling of almost truly being an assassin as seen in many other genres, weaving through enemies and taking them down with deadly weapon poison. The character you'll be seeing in the later parts of this video has been built up with some very nice gear, that being two six links, a plus one arrow quiver, and a dying sun. However, the build still works just fine on two five links and none of the other items, as seen in this footage of a T12 map. I was also able to defeat Red Elder on only five links. But of course if this is a build that you like, it certainly has the room to upgrade into very high tier items. Offensively, we are using Poison, delivered by Tornado Shot for clearing, and Barrage for single target. I also experimented with Ice Shot, which worked fairly well, having a higher base damage for a heavier Poison, but it struggled a bit more on high density maps, as we used Chain for more guaranteed Poison applications. Ultimately, you can interchange almost any high base damage bow skill for clearing. I found that once we got all of our extra projectiles, Tornado Shot did the best job of quickly applying many poisons. Since we are an assassin, we will of course also be going for critical strikes to make use of toxic delivery, as well as perfect agony gained from one of our flasks. In the Bestiary League, we also have access to the Venomous Weave Gloves that grants Aspect of the Spider. This aspect stacks spider webs on our enemies, making them take a total of 15% increased damage, as well as the gloves adding more chaos damage to our base attack. Finally, we make use of a Despair Curse Aura granted by our unique amulet. Defensively, we are evasion and dodge based. We get evasion from gear, and we get our dodge from the tree along with flasks. On top of our base evasion, we also make use of Abyss Jewels to apply blind to our enemies, making them 50% less accurate. This blind always procs very quickly due to our high attack speed and number of projectiles that hit enemies. From our Noxious Strikes, Maim, and Venomous Spider Webs, enemies are slowed greatly, making them very easy to target and to avoid. Even if enemies are able to get near us with their slowed movement speed, we are able to push and keep almost all of them away from us with knockback from King of the Hill with our incredibly fast attack speed. But even if we are to get hit, we have a fairly sizable effective health pool, making use of Mind Over Matter for more than a 6,000 life pool. On top of all this, we get instant life and mana gain from our Thief's Torment Ring, making recovery from a large hit feel like almost nothing. As for playstyle, we simply enable Blood Rage, roll our flasks, and phase run through enemies, releasing a few quick tornado shots to begin their quick slip into the afterlife. 
Remember that we are applying a damage over time, so you do not need to shoot enemies until they are dead. For the most part, I found that around two thirds to half life left on the enemy, they would then quickly succumb to the poison stacks. For any heavy single target, simply drop your wither totem and barrage them down. Poison stacks should begin to really shine once the target drops below two thirds life. Also, a nice little trick for Elder is to bring a frost wall for phase two. This lets you protect the shaper from the ad projectiles since we cannot instantly kill the deadly adds that spawn in phase two, as we need to wait a second for our poison to ramp. The passive trees and path of building pace bin are included in the description. Pros of the build. It's a very durable bow character, much more durable than other ones I have played in the past. It clears very quickly for a damage over time build. It's very budget friendly to get started, working only on five links. We can run any map mod, whether it be no leech, physical reflect, elemental reflect, or no regen. And of course we can roleplay as a sneaky assassin. Some cons. We don't have any flashy heralds or shattering effects even though we are critically strike based. It's a damage over time build, so enemies do not die instantly, thus we do not have instant safety from killing our enemies before they hit us. For class and ascendancy, we are choosing the Shadow and Assassin. The Assassin is one of the best and most powerful ways to build poison in patch 3.2. As stated before, it is noxious strikes that brings the meat of the damage. It allows us to stack poisons and thusly increasing their duration, which means more stacks of poison on the target at once for more damage per second. It also gives us a total of 2% base critical strike chance if we apply 20 or more poisons on that target. Toxic Delivery grants us 30% more damage with our poisons, as well as some minor life recovery from mapping. Unstable Infusion is our power charge generator, and Deadly Infusion provides us more buffs to our power charges with critical strike multiplier and another 2% base critical strike chance. This means our 5% critical strike chance Quill Rain will now have a 9% base critical strike chance when attacking most all targets. For Ascendancy Progression, I would follow this order. We grab the following keystones in the tree. Acrobatics. For one point, this keystone provides us 30% chance to dodge attacks. Since we do not stack armor or block, this is very valuable. Phase Acrobatics. Due to the low mitigation properties of the build, I found grabbing the extra 10% attack dodge leading up to Phase Acrobatics, as well as the 30% spell dodge chance from Phase Acrobatics, to be very helpful in all scenarios. Mind Over Matter. Since much of the gear we wear has varied or low life values, and we make use of a Thief's Torment Ring, Mind Over Matter makes for an excellent effective life buffer to add into our build, easily bringing us over 6,000 effective life. Here's a complete endgame passive tree. Defensively, we make sure to grab all of the life and mana notable nodes that we can in the tree, along with their major defensive keystones of the build. Getting these mana nodes are actually very nice, not only for their effective HP, but the attributes and flask effects that we get from them. Offensively, we get poison damage and chance, bow critical strike chance, multiplier, and jewel sockets. I would follow this tree progression into the final tree. For bandits, we will be helping Alira for the critical strike multiplier and elemental resistances. Some useful pantheons for the build include Soul of the Brine King for avoiding chain stuns and possible freezes, Soul of Lunaris for more movement speed and dodge chance. For miners, we could make use of any of them depending on the scenario. Here are the following gem links for the build. Support gem links are shown in order of importance. Gems with set level are either due to their effect not scaling with level, or requirement for cast when damage taken. This is for clearing trash and minor single target. I found that Mirage Archer was really nice as my fifth link as it allowed for more poison applications, coverage, and the ability to hit bosses with tornado shot once to have Mirage Archer effectively act as another damage support whilst you barrage them down. If it doesn't feel powerful enough, you can simply swap in deadly ailments instead. I also recommend getting a level 21 tornado shot for more base damage, as these are very cheap, we do not care about its quality as projectile damage does nothing for poison anymore. This is how you will stack absurd amounts of poisons on bosses. The closer you stand to the target, the more projectiles that are likely to hit it as Barrage fans out over a distance. I found that being between kissing and casual half the screen waving distance was appropriate for getting the most out of your Barrage. 
I also recommend getting a level 21 barrage for more base damage, as these are also very cheap. We do not care about its quality, as projectile damage does nothing for poison anymore. I have also done various testing in Path of Building and in-game for testing the best 6 link. I found that a 20% quality faster attacks beats out a Void Manipulation, Swift Affliction for both kill speed and amount of poisons we can stack in a 4 second period. Due to the use of the Impresence Amulet, we are able to reserve a Despair Blast Me for free, regardless of the supports linked to it. I chose Area of Effect to make it more comfortable for mapping range, but you could also use an Enhanced Gem to gain more damage. You can also swap Ice Golem for Vol Haste if you're mapping, if you wish to do so. Blink Arrow does not need to be linked, it was just the remaining slot that I had open for it. As per usual, with most crit dexterity based builds, a Starconja's head is one of the best options available. It provides critical strike chance, attack speed, and dexterity for more accuracy which we lack, along with a great life roll which we also lack. These are very easy to find an enchant on so that is also a plus. Here are some other unique options. I originally used the Venomous Toxins, but since it lacked life and only provided some poison damage, I couldn't really make use of it in the endgame to get the most out of my build. However, it is very nice for filling out poison chance on your tornado shot if you are a bit low on that. Here's the rare helmet affix priority if you do choose to use one. For the helmet enchant, you'll want to look for the following. I had the Blood Rage enchantment, and it works out very well for both Barrage and for Tornado Shot. A Dendra Bait is the perfect chest for this build. It has a built-in lesser poison, filling out the rest of our poison chance for our Barrage, and giving some more flat chaos damage for our poison, along with significant increases to poison damage and duration since we meet both of these attribute requirements. Finally, we get much needed resistances due to only being able to use one ring. Here are some other unique options. The Cloak of Defiance would let you drop Mom from the tree and adjust accordingly, but it would then require you to find resistances on other gear or within the passive tree. If you choose to use none of these, you may also make use of a rare body armor with the following affix priority. We will be using the Fenomous Weave Gloves as mentioned before. These provide the aspect of the spider. This is reserved like a herald and will apply up to 3 spider webs on enemies within around a screen's distance, making them take 15% increased damage and move 30% slower. The gloves also provide us with some more ailment damage and flat chaos damage to our attacks. These are both great for offensive and defensive bonuses. I wouldn't really recommend any other unique gloves besides these, but you could try and make use of the following. Here's the rare glove affix priority. Now if you have rare gloves, you could also craft aspect of the spider onto them if you do have access to it. Our boots will simply be rare to help fill out life and elemental resistances. Try and get a 30% or more movement speed roll on these so you can zip through the withering enemies as quickly as possible. Here are some unique options if you have resistances fulfilled from your other items. If you choose to use none of these, you may also make use of rare boots with the following affix priority. Here are the following enchants you'll want to look for on boots. You will want to grab a rare belt, mainly focusing on life, strength, and elemental resistances. I was able to snag a Stygian Vise for a reasonable price, for the extra abyssal socket, and then I was able to mastercraft movement speed on it. We will be using the Chaos variant of the Impresence Amulet from Elder. We get damage over time, flat chaos damage, life, and some chaos resistance. Now the best part is, is that we get to reserve a Despair Curse Blasphemy for more damage at no mana reserve cost. Another benefit that we get is whenever we kill a rare or unique mob, we gain Maddening Presence for 10 seconds. This is the dark aura that appears around the character, slowing enemies by 10% and reducing their damage by 10%. This buff is frequently up during mapping and makes us look like an even darker and spookier assassin. If you choose to not use this amulet, then you can then make use of a rare amulet with the following affixes. But be aware, reserving your Despair Aura will be very costly against your Mind Over Matter health buffer. Since we are a damage over time focused build, we will have next to no upfront damage. This means that percentage based leech is non-existent, so to sustain we will have to get a bit crafty. Or just use the Thief's Torment. In actuality, it's a great ring for the build, since we not only get life gain on hit, but mana gain on hit for sustaining both of our health pools. We also get 50% reduced effectiveness of curses on us, a bunch of resistance, and some quantity for minor magic find. However, this does come at the cost of not being able to use our other ring slot, but that is just fine with all the bonuses that we get from this ring. 
we will be using a Quill Rain for our weapon. This is basically our best in slot weapon, as it provides us with insane attack speed for our poison delivery, with no downsides for our damage over time due to the 3.0 changes to damage over time calculations. We can start using it right when we can equip it at level 5. If you are keen on getting one of these as a 6 link, they are actually very cheap on the market, as there is a divination card that returns a 6 link white short bow that you can gamble chance and scour into a Quill Rain. For our quiver, we will be using Maloney's Nightfall. This quiver is great for our build as it provides attack speed, life, physical damage, and percentage increased damage with ailments against blinded enemies. For our flasks, we will be using the following. Coralito Signature. This flask provides us the perfect agony keystone while in use, 25% chance to poison to shore up our clearing skills poison chance, and some poison duration. Along with this, it's a diamond flask base to bolster our critical strike chance even further. A Sulfur Flask. This is a good flask that provides some regeneration and increased damage. Quartz Flask. This is a great defensive flask, greatly increasing our dodge chance and allowing us to slip through enemies with our phasing effect. Quicksilver. Almost a necessity to get good movement speed. Make sure you at least get the Adrenaline Flask suffix for more movement speed. And finally a Life Flask. This could be Divine or Eternal, and you could roll it with Increased or Instant Recovery. Now here are some unique flask options. A Dying Sun is amazing for stacking more poisons and clearing coverage. I highly recommend getting it as soon as you can, and replace your Sulfur Flask with this. As for jewels, I will provide the affix priority for both regular and abyss jewels, along with the example jewels I have in my build. Now for abyss jewels, you will want to get at least one with percentage chance to gain onslaught on kill for increasing your map clear speed. Along with this, try and get percentage chance to blind enemies on attack on that same jewel or another one, and try and aim for more than 8% chance to blind in total. Now as long as you have some currency to buy some simple leveling uniques, this build is a blast to level. I managed to power through the story in under 5 hours with no issue. Right after you get your first ascendancy and added chaos damage, bosses are simply a joke. As we were making use of the Quill Rain which attacks really fast, some Elrion minus mana cost jewelry can be very helpful in the beginning. Once we get the Thief's Torment however, it is very smooth sailing from there on out. For your gem progression I will recommend the following. In the beginning, we won't be able to make much use of poison yet, so we will mainly focus on fast attack speed with some added elemental damage until we get more flat physical and or chaos from items and gems. I found that Caustic Arrow was pretty decent on single target to begin with until we get our barrage. At this point you can have some Dusk Toes for flat chaos damage whilst you're using a flask, making for a good base with our other flat physical damage to get poison damage. Here you want to drop your Split Arrow for Tornado Shot. Here is where the damage ramps up if you have your first ascendancy and pop in an added chaos damage. You also want to drop your heralds for the blasphemy aura at this point. From here you will want to just fill out your supporting gem setups and replace supporting gems in your main links with the ones in the guide as appropriate. Again, you should be able to get through the first few acts on just a simple front end and some rear end damage, but once you get the added chaos in your first labyrinth completed you will just handle mobs and bosses without issue. So there you have it. Poison is not dead, at least with Assassin. Oh, and I made a bow character. And for the first time, I had a joy playing a bow character. This build has managed to get me through some of the most difficult content with ease due to having no real map mod weaknesses, good defensive layers, and pseudo instant leech. I was able to get excellent experience rates through mapping and could take down all the endgame bosses, bar Uber Elder as I have not attempted him. The spider's webs hinder, Assassin's maim, and our poison make the most all bosses very easy to manage. I hope that you have enjoyed the build as much as I have, and get to experience a sneaky assassin that loads their targets full of crippling, life-sapping arrows. As a side note, I did get baited by the Shaper's clone on the slam here, ruining my perfect deathless run. But no worries, our beefy poison cleans them right up. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one, Exile.